mind, I was going to ask you, Hilary, about why you think it's important that we have writers like Trapnell on our first year undergraduate syllabus. Um, I'm guessing it is kind of connected to that idea of challenging some of the preconceptions about periods that we bring. Yes, absolutely. I think partly to challenge the preconceptions about, um, yes, a particular kind of historical period and what that means and what it what it allows and what it disallows. Um, I mean, I certainly, I think, was bowled over by reading this material because I think I had a sense that there was some kind of sort of progress narrative whereby things, you know, that we were somehow at a, at, at, at a pinnacle of the, um, you know, the most developed, the most liberated, the most whatever now, and that in the past things must always have been unremittingly worse mm -hmm. um and that then there was a steady climb if you like from then to now reading Trapnell and and getting a sense of the kind of authority that she was able to command through her speaking and her writing really challenged that mm -hmm. um and and you know provided just the most extraordinary contrast with what I knew for example about Victorian writing where there was a completely different set of um, ideas about gender, power and authority. So that was that was really important for me. And I think that's one really useful um, kind of reason for having uh, figures like Trapnell on um, on our on our syllabuses. Um, also to challenge some of those ideas about about literature, about, you know, if you like, what counts as literature, what we can read. Um, through literature. So it's part of that work that we do, I think, as um, as students of literature to to think about some of the preconceptions and the assumptions that we all bring to the to the work that we read um, and to challenge ourselves as well as others, um, you know, about what counts and what doesn't count and why. Yeah. And I think we would encourage students to to look at their reading list for the year with that kind of question in mind. Why are these authors on this list? Why have they been picked? What um, you know? What are the my lecturers trying to challenge me to think about here? And how might I do it differently? Am I happy with this reading list? Who would I like to see on it? And these are the kind of questions that we're always thinking about. Yes, exactly. And that and that it and it demonstrates, doesn't it, that what does and doesn't appear on a reading list is to some extent arbitrary, it's fluid, it's subject to all the kinds of um, interventions and the debates that we've been talking a little bit about now. So that it that's partly why it's such a dynamic subject, because what, if you like, what constitutes the literary canon is always under pressure yeah. um, and it's always open to change. So I guess we really hope that the students, the incoming students next year who encounter Anna Trapnell probably for the first time, um, find themselves able to kind of draw on some of the ideas that we've been talking about um, in this in this film to um, they can bring some of that to their reading um, and to their thinking and discussion about Anna Trapman.